Hello, hello. Here I have a replay of Chaos Dwarfs. I'm not sure if I had one on a replay cast already on my channel. Might be a first. Versus Tomb Kings. And the Tomb Kings come with a Bone Giant, the first thing that sticks out of the army by virtue of pure size, um, which is a very likely attack against magma cannons and death streaks to snipe them out because otherwise you might have a problem but this map is fairly problematic for line of sight shooting uh, as you might see a lot of trees some elevations that um, make things harder and this big uh, temple Pavilion, whatever. Um, so I'm curious how this will work out. Um, we continue with strong shooting pieces, the Chosen of the Gods. You always see them. Delete or large are still good against infantry. And yeah, shit breakers kind of pointless. Um, skeleton warriors, skeleton warriors, double necrotect? No, just one. Uh, with a restore and the embraces of the sun on foot yes this thing applies a blind contact effect and i wouldn't say is a decent infantry combatant it's just not true but this blinded is so damn strong yeah uh catap with incantation of vengeance vengeance the stronger version of Melkoth Miasma uh, by being more efficient and uh, bound sandstorm and some cheap spell to spam and trigger the restless dead healing map white and annoy everyone by removing their casts. Though, if this guy spams. Uh, it will also heal the Sorcerer Prophet. You should be aware of that. The rest is here. Oh, those are actually Tomb Gods. Interesting that you put them up front. Usually if you walk into enemy artillery or shooting, you put your cheap units up front and not um, the expensive ones because the front will first take the first volleys. Then we have from Crumbrindle here, um, two Fireborn. I'm curious about them. Um, they are good infantry blenders, you have to say. Um, I'm not sure if they're good enough for the price, but I've certainly seen them do work. Um, the Unbreakable drops if uh, the hit points drop below 25%, which is kind of pointless to have unbreakable then. And they have some reflection here. I don't know how fast this charges. Um, we'll try to keep a lookout. And then, yeah, double Inferno Guard and Inferno Guard Regiment of Renown with blasting charges. Um, no. Cast Dwarf Warriors? Wait. Oh well, it doesn't matter what the base type is. They have jacked stats enough to be super high tier elite. And a single Death Shriek and Hobgoblins. And now I leave running. So a very elite army. I forgot the Sorcerer Prophet. Um, he didn't actually bring the healing item, which is funny. Um, though. I can understand to not want to bring a big flying target into um, Tomb Kings because the thing, the thing, and this thing. <laughs> and somewhere there's probably also laser snakes and reinforcement. So, yeah, um, I understand this decision. Um, probably you could have then gone with other lords that might be more efficient, but on the other hand, just burning head is good against Tomb Kings. So, and now 
here you will have the tomb guard up front and eat blasting charges. Or not. Get charged by fireborn instead, I guess. Um, I really would say the first charge should have been taken by uh, the spears. Best is if you hold them to get charge defense and charge reflection before impact. Um, and then mix in the tomb guards without them getting charged anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, otherwise, this happens. Though, going here into melee was maybe problematic already from the start. And you might have just conceded this first and just go with shooting. As you see, the uh, Boshapti shooting does really well into the Fireborn. Let's look. Uh, how much this is charged? 10%, so they need to spend quite a long time in uh, melee for this to work out. Yeah, uh, probably rather pointless. Um, how is the spray fire shot doing good work in here? This is surprising to me, I would have thought that um, only the single shot mode would be good. Um, but now the Bone Giant has actually moved up far enough to be able to shoot here, get the angle, and the thing needs to get back behind the trees, or better even behind the thing. Um, it should have enough range to shoot from here. I don't know if you can see my cursor well from here. And there it should be really safe. Um, but at the same time, you might not have the range to push, uh, to shoot up onto here, and uh, it's a bit tricky decision to make. Maybe this position would have been better. Do you have this slopey here and a forest on top, which should protect you? Um. Here some bull centaur renders uh, without great weapons, interesting. I would have expected to come with a great weapon variant because their main target will be Shapti and Bo Shapti uh, and maybe those laser snakes. Um, I think if they charge into them, uh, this was my discord ping, um, they will still do good, even if the laser snakes have a uh, strong anti-large. If the other side has a 2, it's kinda... Um, then who is the stronger fighter? Yep, the Death Shriek rallied at the point where I... No, don't drive up. Okay, actually... Wait, let me check the range before it dies. Actually, the range from here is... A just barely long enough. If it sits here, it will struggle hitting things around here. So yeah, uh, going the extra, spending the extra 30 seconds to move the thing from where it was standing here-ish to this position would have been good, a wise investment in the beginning. Um, often you get too impatient and start shooting right away when you can. Um, so, um, the super elite infantry from the uh, Chawi is still alive to a good part and takes his forest and zone controls the tomb guard. Uh, Tomb Kings completely away from this point and also has some forces here. And the Tomb Kings are very heavily invested in shooting, which doesn't get great angles here, though uh, I guess you absolutely can't complain about their values. Um, so. Uh, it is expected to not be able to contest this point immediately if you go so heavily into shooting. You just spend your first time 
shooting away at them and then takes a point after a while. Um, though, um, they have to be in a bit of a hurry. You don't want to let those points tick up too far. Though, as it currently stands, they seem to be doing good enough that they should be able to fight for a triple cap afterwards. And if you are going for this, you notice that you have a long time left. Um, you, you just need to be aware of that. More laser snakes. I'm a bit skeptical of this decision. Uh, you have already so many anti-large killing tools on the field. And well, it's gonna be a nice burning head. Other tomb kings, uh, tomb guard? No, but two dead skeletons. And if it touches those Neheka warriors, they might also... Uh, well, they start crumbling. Not much left though. Um, Barely. <laughs> Actually, hmm. It feels like the Tomb Kings are doing way better, but currently they are being in a struggle to not get triple capped themselves. And I think that's due to a crossover investment into One of your units uh, has been destroyed. double bow shapti, a bone giant, and now double laser snakes. Um, that is a lot of large killing tools and it is also killing tools that easily get obstructed by each other if one gets compromised. Others are also infernal guards. Grumbindle going all in in the elite units. Wow. Uh, well, they have the leadership to really back it up and go for almost being unbreakable as you can see with those here. And they're doing good. They're doing good. Uh, this one not. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah, they won't be get their value back by fighting infantry, but they hold this position here for such a long time in exact zone control on this point, and then the mage um, can be able to farm off the uh, stalled units that cluster around them. This wasn't a good hit. The unit was very weirdly stretched out and it curved out of immediately a bit. Um, Bone Giant actually a bit on a leadership issue here. Uh, this, is, this is not an effective trade. Uh, I can understand that you um, ignore those for a moment and try to remove those bow center arenas as they are a big threat, but um, now that they are routed, or at the moment they start the terror routing, you really need to pull them out of melee with the Inferno Guard. And yeah, um, the Tomb Kings, yeah, uh, uh, finally everything here is almost routed and they take this point, but uh, now they uh, might actually be a few seconds away from triple capping, having to triple cap. No way. I don't know how wrong my math is here. They might be lucky. Oh no, it's still hold held for 50 and it's for... F no, uh, they have to. Pretty sure they have to. Burning head curved slightly away, lucky. Or rather went straight line. No, One curved a bit away. Uh, this is bad. This unit should be on the point and it should. Uh, well, it can't capture alone against infantry, so it doesn't matter that much, but the Necrotech should join in and then they can capture against them. Uh, you have the oh yeah, the Fireborn on. there knows a second life and they immediately target it by Boshapti again and I guess the fight against the Eyes of the Desert isn't super bad uh, since they are a bit more elite fighters in melee uh, so if you don't let them shoot it should be fine at the trade but not while being shot uh, by Bushapti and having infantry support for the other side. 
Um, so this point is fairly secured, uh, but now they need to start making a play for this side uh, while holding back the assaults on this point here. And Tomb Kering player is, is a bit playing relaxed for my taste. Uh, <laughs> The time is click ticking, and um, against such high leadership units, you need to start planning for a triple cap early. Though it's still five minutes now, so uh, it's still five minutes. But there's a lot of units just here that, like, why do you walk them back? You need to get to this point and start taking it, and you're blind will be very efficient there, or very needed, so that uh, the Nekar warriors here don't just get bodied by the in Inferno Guard. Um, though that is truly the only unit left on the field for um, the Chaos Dwarves, so um, I, I know where my money is on and actually if it's now another elite unit um, costing a lot of resources um, they will not die quickly on this point but if the point is just taken away from beneath their feet uh, this doesn't matter though yeah, uh, those all those calf units and if the infantry comes on here, which it certainly should do, and you should also just move uh, the bone giant just this this tiny step closer onto the corner of the point so that it applies capture weight uh, while shooting. Um, If you time it that you start moving after a shot, you probably don't even lose that much of your shooting time. What's the value on it? Yeah, this one did very good. Now it is out of ammo, and I would say in this stage of the game, you definitely don't unsummon it. If it had reached that earlier, um, or if you didn't, or if your reinforcement would be closer, um, I would totally say to unsummon it and uh, summon proper capture rate in return. Um, but right now, point. if it's so close to the point that you're fighting over, uh, definitely just walk it in there and bring the terror and capture rate. So, yeah, um, and the point is ticking, and even if this miraculously shifts to favor uh, the Chaos Dwarfs again, which I don't think it will, um, uh, they wouldn't need it at this point no longer a triple cap, and those other points are so far out of reach from the Chaos Dwarfs. I might as well unending glory is yours. Uh, play uh, speed it up. That so um this force is super elite dowry build and some of the units have done good. Um Others really didn't. The Tomb Kings were very um, dominant in dictating the pace of this um, game, as the uh, uh, Charis have largely removed their tools to, um, yeah pressure other sites with quick responses everything here is slow 
The rocket launcher has to have some very specific positions to not get shot, which he didn't really find. Um, and yeah, on the infantry you can really see which one reached good combat and which one just got shot. And those probably both got summoned like three times, so their value is a bit deceptive, though they did good for this. Um, the Tomb Kings didn't struggle quite a lot with uh, actually trying to keep the cavalry and the bull centaurs out of their bow shapti since they brought so much shooting or so expensive is shooting but still um, they they got hit and they got compromised several times each and uh, that is the strength, strong part about bow shapti they just don't care uh, they come out of life and still do great damage and usually they don't even lose a significant amount of models by being compromised and charged by something um, uh, Eyes of the Desert also were most of the time in melee, uh, I think. If I saw them fighting over the side point there, they were kinda in melee with Infernal Guard, which shouldn't be, uh, which should be a nightmare situation actually for them. Um, or afterwards with the Fireborn, but they still did so good. Um, the Necro Necrotech was actually kinda. He didn't really find a home. Um, the Tomb King's strategy was all in on shooting, basically, and not on a melee grind. So um, I guess he had healed for the constructs. So that that might be his point. But um, I see them more f useful. Oh, those were actually too. I didn't notice the second one. Um, this one did better and apparently found some good engagements for him. Uh, I see them more on a white or stronger infantry focused builds. Or Uchapti melee, uh, melee focused builds, I should say, not infantry necessarily. Yeah. Not the tomb guard you've seen how they did in the beginning. This was really a good pick for the fire burn, but afterwards they just got shot. Yeah, um, this elite build I don't think is a good thing. It kind of worked early with zone control, but no, not really. Um, tomb kings struggle against white armor build so just going with a lot of chaos war warriors definitely would have been better here i would say i'm not a super experienced in chaos dwarf so uh, i can only spew some general facts <laughs> and with that i think i commented on about everything and yeah See you on the next one.